okay, it's another optional assignment. And, you know, I, I always say that, you know, we, we would really, really, really love for you guys to start to read, but it says, you know, writing doable problems is challenging, it is. And I'll be honest with you, in mathematics, you know, sometimes people don't even write challenging problems. What they do is they, you know, they look at a book and they copy a problem here. And my own experience in education is when you look at a calculus textbook, a tremendous number of problems are really copied across the board. I mean, this probably dates back to the original calculus book, uh, Lopi Tao's book. You know, Lopi Tao was also, you know, he, he was copying problems or just buying problems from people that he could reuse in his textbook. I mean, the point of that was his name is immortalized now, but the bottom line is a lot of the problems are just lifted from textbooks nowadays anyway. I mean, they're really, and you could go through any textbook and you could find, you know, some, some of the original examples that were used in Lopi Tao's, sometimes without reference to it. Anyway, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I can't remember if I wrote this problem or somebody else wrote this problem, or I just made it up. Probably I just made this one up because I'm looking at it. It looks like something I would make up. All right. So it says over here, it, it's a tricky problem. And I, I'll be honest with you, most students, teachers would, would find this to be extremely difficult question. I mean, they would approach this problem in all the wrong ways. There's no doubt about it. So someone says, how does someone approach a problem in the right way? Experience. And what, how do you get experience? working hard at doing problems. And it's gonna be a constant struggle for you, all right? The more you do, the better. It's almost like playing uh, any game. The more you play the game, the better you get at it. Uh, are some people better than others? Of course there are. Some people have a natural talent for solving problems. But anyway, how would you proceed? Most would start by you know differentiating or long division, blah, blah, blah. They get something like this over here. If they did it, right? If they bother doing it, all right? No one in their right mind would see this as easy though. But the fact is, we still do not have a series for it. So no matter how you did this, whether you did it by maybe long division or differentiation or some other you know, crazy technique that you learned, that this thing just is not predictable to me. Like there's no way I could look at these terms and say, oh, the next term is, can't do it. I can't anyway. I can't look at that and know the next term. Now, granted, if you were, you know, really talented at looking at the numbers, maybe you could predict the next term, right? Even looking at it, you know, plus, minus, 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 plus, who knows? All right, who knows, right? So I'm going to say, I, I, you know, certainly th th this isn't the end of the problem, of course. By the way, you may also ask the machine this question, but I still think it's going to befuddle you. All right, you're gonna, it's still going to befuddle you. Like go back to Wolfram Alpha or whatever. So what I want to do is, talk about the way I did it. And certainly we're looking at my notes over here. First off, if you, if you proceed by doing the long division, you'll probably notice that it's not easy. And you may want to give it a shot. You may want to try long division. So what I did was I, I, I looked at the bottom. And I'll point out what I mean by that. I looked at this bottom over here and I noticed the bottom, the derivative of the bottom sure does look like the, when I take the derivative of the bottom, it looks closely related to the top. So let me, let me go through that with you. So what I do, I took the derivative and I said the derivative of the bottom looks really, it looks just like it, all right? So I'm gonna say over here, when I differentiate just that you know one over this thing, what do I get this thing over here? Now the question is, is this thing, this thing, it is. So someone gonna say, did the person writing that problem know that? They sure did, they knew that. That's why they did it. They did this to make it doable. They didn't just write a random number down. They wrote something that's doable. So here's what they did. They said that this thing differentiated would give me this thing over here. So then it says over here, well, gee, now what I could do is look for the series of this guy over here, right? So I'm gonna say this guy over here, it sort of looks like this one over here that I know. I actually know this series. And someone says, I don't see how that looks like that. Well, it's gonna look like that. And we're going to go through that. So I'm going to say this thing here reminds me of this one over here. All right, reminds me of that. So what I do over there, I said, yes, you'll need to complete the square and do some factoring. See me during office hours if you need help in that. So what I did was I took this thing over here and I went through the whole process of rewriting it by completing the square. And I got this over here. Stuff that you learn in Math 119. And then what I do, I let u equal this. This looks crazy, I know that but I want this to look like one over one minus u, just like this over here. So I did this, 
I wrote this down over here, and then I could write the series down. All right? I could do that. I could write the series down then. Now, here's the deal. Someone says, I don't have no idea what you just did over here. We wrote the series down for this. That's all I've done. It's right over here. What you need to do, though, is you need to differentiate. And that's where trouble comes in. So when you differentiate this thing over here, you would get, if you differentiate this, you get this. And if you differentiate this right side, you may want to do that by expanding it. You would get this series over here. Then what's the next thing I did? You know, I would encourage you, you know, certainly I use technology to check things, you know, by graphing things. What I do is I graph this guy out and I graph this guy. I, I made sure it, it, it looked like that. I'm on some interval of convergence. I did do the ratio test on it. I found an interval of convergence for it, yada, yada, yada. But I want to go through this now. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to another technology and I want to talk about how to do that. All right. So I, it, it's not easy, by the way. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy for you. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go to um, Grapher. All right. So I get, I get open up Grapher. And someone says, why are you using Grapher? I want to use Sage. We're not preventing you from using any software you want. Use software you like. This is going to be an unusual thing to be stated to you. Because when you work for an employer, they'll say, no, you must use what I tell you to use. All right. And the reason for that, they're, they, 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 they're trying to protect themselves. Right. So I'm just typing this in here. Right. I'm just typing this in. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Not beyond make a mistake. Whoops. I don't want to do 22. That'd be crazy. Right. Let's see how I typed it in. Three minus two X, seven minus three X plus X squared. And then I want to square it. Okay, I, I'm I'm not really seeing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to zoom in. Or I, I'm seeing that. All right. Let me get rid of the grid because it really bothers me to no end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm not going to graph that sum. And what's someone going to graph this crazy guy over here? And let me do that for you. So I'm going to do equation. Oh, you can do this with other software. I don't think it's the only software you use. I want to do the sum. I'm going to say n equals one. I can't go to infinity because I'll be honest with you, that would take forever. So I'm just going to do maybe 10 for the time being, just to test it out. Now, what's the sum of? Let's write this in. It's a fraction. And what's in the fraction? 16n minus 1 to the n plus 1. I'm just typing what I see. If I make a mistake, I'll know I made a mistake. This is easier for me to use than it is for me to use the Sage software. It's so much easier for me to use that. But again, I want to encourage you, you need to find something that you find easy to use. All right, what am I dividing by? 19 to the n plus one. And I'm seeing it. Now someone says, what are you seeing over there? I'm seeing two curves. I'm just gonna zoom out. And what I'm seeing, I just wanna get, I wanna get to the region that it appears to be fitting it. All right, and this is me just verifying what I think I got is right. So what I want to do is I'm going to zoom into the region I think it's fitting over here. All right, you see what I'm doing? All right. Now, by the way, I want to go back to my notes, and I'm just checking myself. And I want to put these lines in over here for you. All right, what, what are those lines going to be? That's going to be x equals, right? So new equation, and I'm going to say x equals a fraction, I'm going to do the interval of convergence. And that fraction is going to be three minus the square root of 19. And again, this is much easier for me to do. And I'm seeing that and I'm going to put another um, line in because I think it's going to fit between that. And I don't know, maybe I made mistakes. So new equation, and that's going to be X equals a fraction three plus the square root of 19. 
over two. All right, now I'm gonna just go over here and I'm gonna just, you know, maybe move this a little bit around. All right, and what I wanna do is I, I wanna make these things, you know, look, stand out more. So I'm gonna get my inspector, I'm gonna make them dashed and I'm gonna change your color to magenta. Okay, let me close that out. And I'm gonna take this guy here and I'm gonna change its color because I want it to stand out. And I'm gonna make it green. Okay, so I got that done. And this guy, I don't know if I need this guy to stand out, but I, I think you get the idea, right? Now I'm gonna, let me just zoom out again. And I'm gonna maybe make it, I'm, I'm gonna zoom in again, but give me one second to try that. Okay, I'll just maybe get a little bit closer to it to get a better feel for what this thing looks like. All right. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna, play around with the number here. So I wanna see what they did. So what they did over here was they did it to 99 terms. And I wanna point out, if you look at the fit, it's impeccably good between those limits we have. But I wanna go out to 99 and someone's gonna say, oh, it's gonna take too much time to do that. It could, sometimes you know, going to 99 terms is really gonna be a slow process. But let's see what happens. Let's see if it gets better. All right, so I'm going to, by the way, let's do one first. That's a straight line. Is it a good fit? Yeah, in a region. Let's go to two next. You get the idea? That's a cubic problem now. All right, let's go to three next. It's even getting better. Hope you see that. Let's go to four next. That gets even better. Again, I want to go, you can do this at five and then six and then seven. You're going to see it's going to get better and better. But know how big you get that number to be, like even 99, it's never going to go beyond those vertical lines I've drawn over there. So what I'm seeing over there, I see that. But no matter how far I go out, it's never going to go beyond the bounds of that. Now, you have to go out pretty far to get this to go out, you know, to the, to the, uh, the absolute edges of that. But the bottom line is, I hope you start to realize what an impeccably good fit that is on a region, all right? So that's gonna close that out. I wanna point out, yeah, I did use technology. I did talk through this. And I wanna point out part of talking through that is to get you guys to think about this one over here. And you may wanna try it on your own. What I mean by that, look at this over here. Notice at the bottom, it's derivatives on the top or close to it, it's close to it. I mean, certainly you've been doing this for a long time. It's really the same technique, same technique, same exact technique and also putting your graph down at the end. You may wanna give that a try. Let me repeat this though. I use software that you may not enjoy using. You need to make decisions on your own. That is, you need to find products that work for you. What have I been hawking to you? Sage, Grapher, Wolfram Alpha. If you can afford it, Mathematica. MATLAB is what um, NJIT is gonna push on you. Yes, I used to own MATLAB, but I got sick and tired of paying for the upgrade fees. Just like for Mathematica, I used to own that too. And it just, it just gets overwhelmingly expensive. Grapher to me is, I've had this and really haven't had to pay for it. Uh, it comes with the operating system. Sage is a free um, um, open software. I do, know, I do know, donate money to them, but the bottom line is free for anyone to use and download to their computers. All right, thank you for paying attention.